guys. We're just going to take a quick minute here to take a look at King Makar. Now, King Makar the Gold Cursed is a 4 cost 2 3 human legendary creature. Uh, his ability is an inspired ability, and whenever he becomes untapped, you may exile target creature. If you do, you get an artifact that you can sacrifice for 1 mana. Pretty cool ability. Removal on a stick is always nice. Uh, some of his strengths are that he's very underrated. People are going to see him and not think a lot about it in the beginning, especially compared to other generals that can just kill things like a Vassar the Dreadful or many other creatures that Mono Black can use. Another one of his strengths is that being a Mono Black general, he has access to a lot of good things. Black has probably the best removal in the game, you know, second best sweepers in the game. It has the best tutors in the game, so Black brings a lot to the table just in itself. Those are some really good things he already has going for him. Uh, he also has the underlying strength of politics. You know, you can really play the politics game where you can remove, you can exile your opponent's creatures to help a different opponent and uh, sort of be the passive paving your way to victory. Some of his downfalls are that his ability really requires a lot to be removing, uh, a lot to be moving around him. You either need to swing with him and hope he survives so you can untap him, or you need to be able to manually tap and untap him. So he relies a lot on what's going on around him, and that's that can be a huge, huge downfall for him. Another one of his weaknesses is that he's he's four cost. You know, his ability, being a slow ability, but coming in at four mana makes him a little slow. And from my point of view, I would have liked to have seen him at maybe the two mana or three mana land rather than four. But those are just the way it is. And his ability, which also can be taken as a very cool way to play politics, some people are going to see that and immediately see him as a threat where he has built-in removal. So as much as that may be a positive, it also, on the flip side, is still a negative. So uh, those are some positive and negatives about King Makar. Something I'd also say about him before we actually get into the deck tech, deck tech rather, is that if you want a very aggressive win hard general you don't want to play king makar you know if the, the reasons you may want to play him you know reasons to play him are that you like the underdog uh you like to have the kooky abilities that people might find fun and that you like a really synergistic general that needs to be built around if you reasons that you might not want to play him or you want to consistently win <laughs> you know he's he's not one of these super powerhouse generals Another reason that you may also want to, you know, look at King Makar or look away from him is that there's so many better choices in black than King Makar. But he is the, the king we chose to be part of our Clash of Kings, and that's what this deck tech is all about. So, uh, you know, we'll be getting to the deck tech in just a second. I hope you enjoy. Thanks a lot. Today's deck tech will be for our upcoming Clash of Kings Battle Royale, and it features one of the kings. This king will be King Makar the Gold Cursed. Now he's basically a uh, a very inspired from version of King Midas who turned everything to gold and much like that, that's sort of what his ability does. But let's go over the king. So King Makar is a 4 cost, 2-3 uh, human, pretty basic creature type. And he has the ability to be inspired. And whenever King Makar the Gold Cursed becomes untapped, you may exile target creature. If you do, put a colorless artifact token named Gold out of the battlefield, and it has sacrificed this artifact to add one mana to your mana pool. So his ability serves a twofold. It gives you a little bit of excel, and at the same time it allows you to be able to exile creatures, and exile is always better than destroy. So, you know, this deck was really built to take advantage of what he can do and help him out on his path to uh, touching everything and making it all gold. So I'm going to slide him off to the side for now. As it stands right now for the land base, which we'll go over first, it is just 38 swamps. Nothing really crazy at the moment. We are going to be putting in a Cabal Coffers, Vesuva, Thespian Stage, um, and, you know, those kind of lands of Bajuka Bog. We just don't have them at the moment. So for now, it'll be fine with just 38 basic swamps. As it is a mono black deck, we don't really need a lot of other things in the way of that. So some other spells we'll go over. First we'll go over our enchantments. We run Oversold Cemetery to be able to get our creatures back. Attrition to be able to destroy creatures at the cost of a creature. Mind Slash to be able to get rid of our opponent's cards at the cost of a creature. Greed to be able to draw cards and it varies on theme with King Midas. 
and the goldy sort of theme we have going. Grave pack, so when I lose a creature, they lose a creature, which works out really, really nicely with both attrition and mind slash. As I sacrifice a creature, they will have to lose one as well. Dictated Verbo serves another purpose to Grave Pact. And Palace Siege, which we will generally be using the mode to choose cons to get back our creatures. So that more or less comes up with the the enchantments. Not really a lot going on, just some basic stuff we have in there. For kill spells, we have our Doom Blade, Grass of Darkness, Victim of Night, Sudden Death, Dismember, Guild, because it's very on theme with King Midas, actually does the exact same thing he does. Sever the Bloodline, Mutilate, Extinguish All Hope, and Decree of Pain. And that rounds up all of our removal spells. For our Planeswalkers, we run Liliana of the Dark Realms, because all of her modes are super relevant for us. Her first mode to be able to tutor for a swamp is awesome, her second mode to kill is awesome, and her third mode to give us an emblem that can... Make our Swamp Staff of Four are all really, really good modes for us. Then we have Obnixilus of the Black Oath. He's one of the new Commander Generals. Um, you know, he has some good abilities as well. Being able to, uh, each opponent loses life and I gain the life. And also make it so I can get a Demon, which is really, really nice. And then being also able later on to get the Emblem where I can sacrifice a creature for life and cards is very, very nice. I primarily use him just to bounce back and forth between his ability to drain opponents and get me demons just to have guys on the board. Then we have Obnixilus Reignited, the other form of the Obnixilus Planeswalker. But what he's going to do for us is draw us cards, destroy creatures, and uh, he's going to make target opponent have a lot of pain. <laughs> that's that's really what we like. He's mostly in there for the creature kill as well as the uh, the the drain life as well. Sorry, the, uh, the draw cards and the creature kill, not the drain life. That's silly of me to say. For tutors, we're running Diabolic Tutor, Demonic Collusion, Dark Petition, and Diabolic Revelation. Pretty basic tutor package. Then we have a little group of tech spells here, and those are Knight's Whisper to draw some cards, Sign and Blood to draw some cards, Ambition's Cost to draw some cards, Ancient Craving to draw some cards, Profane Command because it has some great modes. And Beacon of Unrest, the res, an artifact, or a creature. That's more or less our, our techie spells, I guess you could say. Uh, now I'm going to go over the artifacts. Where King Makara does sort of rely on tapping and untapping, the artifacts really do <coughs> excuse me, help come, come a long way with that. So we have Paradise Mantle, which lets me tap King Makara for mana. Springleaf Drum, which lets me tap him for mana. Stronic Resolator will let me copy abilities. Thornbite Staff will let me untap King Makar whenever a creature dies. <laughs> Nim Death Mantle will let me res my creatures. Umbral Mantle will let me untap King Makar at will for three mana. Thousand Year Elixir will let me untap him as well. Ashnod's Altar lets me sacrifice a creature for mana. Puppet Strings will let me tap or untap King Makar depending on what I need to do at the moment. Staff of Domination lets me do a lot of things. <laughs> I can untap itself or tap it to gain life, or tap it to untap tower creature, or tap it to tap target creature, or tap it to draw a card, all at the cost of different amounts of mana. So that's a very, very nice ability. Then we have Sword of the Perunes, which lets me tap or untap the equipped creature. Conjures cause it to flicker out some of my cooler guys. And we have Cage Sun just to double up my black mana. So as you can see, I, I do really go a lot with the tapping and untapping theme. Um, because King Makar really does strive when you can do that. Now for the creatures. We are running Viscerous here to be able to scry with a sacrifice. Nazumi Grave Robber to be able to remove cards from the graveyard or flip him to be able to res creatures. Grim Harrispix is to be able to draw some cards. Royal Assassin lets me just take guys out. Erebos God of the Dead gives me an indestructible creature that also lets me draw cards. And my opponents can't gain life, which is, you know, a little bit of a benefit. Crypt Gas for the doubling of mana. Disciple of Bolas for the life gain and the drawing of the cards. Grim Merchant of Asphodel because he does what he does very well. Sidisi Undead Vizier for another tutor. Blood Gift Demon for draw. Ghoul Call Glissa to generate some tokens. Archfiend of Depravity will help me clear the field. Magus of the Coffers helps me get some mana. Skeletal Vampire, he makes a really, really great late-game blocker as you can invest more and more mana into him. 
Um, he's really hard to get rid of once you get a real good mana engine going. Micaeus, because he makes all of my guys undie. Except my king. <laughs> he doesn't make my king undie. Uh, we have Harvester of Souls, because he has Death Touch, and I draw cards when a creature dies. Grave Titan brings in guys, has Death Touch. Reaper of the Abyss will let me kill a guy whenever something else dies at the end of turn. Aberrant Overlord will give me a bunch of flyers for devotion. Shoulder the Whispering One is going to give me a quite a few reses and sacrifices, so she's just a powerhouse when she's on the board. And Rune Scar Demon helps me tutor as well. So one of the things that really makes King Makar powerful in my book is just that he he flies under the radar. No, people aren't going to look at him and think that he's just you know a weapon of mass destruction, which he really really can be. Just little interactions he has. If you have, you know, your Paradise Mantle down on him, and you have down, say, your Umbral Mantle, well, I can, if these are both on him, I can tap him, add a black to my mana pool, or any color really, but it would be black because that's what I could do, and then I can use that one, invest two more of my mana to untap him. Now I'm going to exile one of their creatures, and I'm going to get my, my gold artifact. So that's what my board state will be. Then I'm going to tap him, add another man to my mana pool. I'm going to sacrifice my gold token for a colorless. So now I have two colorless floating, or two mana floating rather, which means I can invest one more mana now to use Umber Mantle to untap him. And every time I use Umber Mantle to untap him, he also gets a plus two, plus two. So now if I've done that twice, he's now a six, seven. And I can do it again. It will, since he untapped, I can exile another thing. I get another one of these. Tap him for a mana, sacrifice this for a mana, then untap him for just one more mana. Now he's an 8-9, and I exile another creature. And at that point, you can really do some damage, and he can really go in for a lot of damage very quickly. He's He really flies under the radar, and with the mana doubles that I have in here, it really allows me to be aggressive with him. And then I have, you know, un more untap engines, untap engines, untap engines... Untap, untap, tap him down. Like I have, I have a lot of ways to really do what he does well. Besides the fact that I have just a lot of mono black good stuff in here that will let me use him as he should be, um, and just a lot of other effective things in the deck. But that's more or less the the King Makar deck. Not really a lot going on with it. Um, you know, you can see all the weapons it has. It really is a a late game deck. It's going to use its its removal early game to sort of set the game, its tutors to find the pieces, and then once it finds the pieces, it's going to really use a lot of synergy to really go ahead and, uh, you know, make people not forget when you played against King Makar. But yeah, this is Derek with Tap and Turn Gaming, King Makar EDH Deck Tech for Clash of Kings. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks a lot and goodbye.